All right, hey guys, um, I've, I'm done with this uh, Wave Venture. I took it out last night for the initial run and it ran fantastic. I didn't have any problems at all. Um, very good idle and uh, I actually did kind of a break in on it, which uh, means I, I never ran it much over a quarter throttle. So I kind of went quarter throttle down, up and down, up and down for about a half hour. And uh, I did run it up to about 35, 40, just one time to kind of make sure that everything uh, seemed to be running good. And then I didn't do that anymore because I want to break it in correctly. Um, I, I suppose there's a number of ways to do it, but I subscribe to quarter throttle, up and down, up and down for a half hour, half throttle, up and down, up and down for a half hour, and then three quarter throttle, up and down, up and down for a half hour, and then um, full throttle, up and down for a while, and then maybe go through a second tank, uh, you know, riding it pretty normal, but going uh, up and down, up and down with your throttle, full throttle through another tank. And remember, this is all at 32 to one, a pretty high oil mix. And uh, that's what I'm going to do to break this in. I, I'm no pro at this, but I, I've read a couple blogs where people say that that's a good way to do it. So that's what I'm going to do. It sounds reasonable. Um, so anyhow, uh, everything went great last night. It was really awesome to finally get on it and uh, and try it out. Um, I, before I fire this thing up, I'll show you um, some of the stuff I put into this. Um, the gauge cluster was bad on this machine, so I, I made my own. Um, I machined a piece of Delrin plastic and bought a GPS speedometer for it. Um, and I put a little on-off switch on here so you can turn it on and off right on the gauge. Because I, I kind of overlooked the fact that this GPS doesn't shut off on its own. But it uses very little power. I put it on a battery for a while and watched the voltage in it really it was on for three days and it used like you know not even a half a volt but still I put an on off, off switch on there and I also put a um, an over temp sensor light on there from a from a Kawasaki but got it on eBay for like six bucks and I like the way it looks it's cool so now this thing has a trip meter and a GPS speedometer um, I wired it in pretty uh, this is kind of a kind of looks messy, but it's it's on there really good. Um, I made a wire harness that goes up to all this stuff, and it goes to this main four-pin connector. The rest of the stuff is just sensors. You don't you don't need those anymore. If you if you have a ba bad gauge cluster, your only option really is to buy one on eBay. Brought 200 bucks, and it might work or it might not for three months. I in my opinion, it's you know it's not a real good investment. I've got all brand new parts here for. 60 bucks and if that GPS gauge goes bad I can pull it out and put a new one in. It's kind of like a common um, it's a common size for marine applications. So you just pull it out and stick a new one in. Um, they're cheap. Uh, anyhow, wiring. I mean I, I struggled with it a little bit but I figured it out. Um, there's a black and a red and a pink and a green wire coming out of this four pin harness. I use black and red for power, and the pink wire comes off of your thermal protection thermal switch right here. Thermal couple. Uh, it's right here. It's stuck inside the, the exhaust about two thirds of the way back, and that'll ground itself out, and it'll ground out in the CDI and make this thing run really boggy, like it's only running on one cylinder. Well, that's so you can limp it home and not overheat it too bad. So I wired in my light for the dash using the pink wire and the red wire. I, I treated pink as ground and the red wire as power to this light. And it works pretty awesome. I went ahead and um, um, I don't have this bolted in right now because I wanted to show you guys how I did this. Uh, here's your thermocouple. I'm going to take a heat gun and point it at that for about 30 seconds and you're going to see what this does up on the dash There. 
came on. Sorry, that didn't work very good because I was trying to run a heat gun with one hand. There it went off because it cooled off. Fantastic. I love that light. It sticks out like a sore thumb. You know, a buzzer would be better, but what can you really hear when you're riding these things? They're, they're kind of loud. So, I mean, the next level of verifying this would be to put that in water, like the manual says, and uh, and see when it actually trips a light. It's supposed to be like 206 degrees or somewhere in there. Well, I don't care. I'm good with this. It'll tell me if it's hot, and I know limp mode works because I, I ground the pink wire to, to, I ran the pink wire to a hot wire, and it was running really terrible, like it's running on one cylinder and it wouldn't rev up. Well, that's the function of it. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, with this dash and how it turned out. It looks nice. Uh, let's go ahead and fire this thing up and you can listen to it. throttle response out of the water. Um, obviously if you're familiar with these, they when they run out on the water they're kind of gurry. I call it gurry. Like it's, it sounds like they're kind of gurring around like wah, and they, but they still have a lot of power. And so out of the water they sound really crisp like a like a chainsaw. Now you can't, once you get your your engine put back together and you fire it up and put water to it, you can't just open the throttle up and and assume it's going to run all nice high RPMs like a chainsaw. It won't. There's a rev limiter somewhere around 7,600 RPMs, and uh, it's going to basically kind of start bogging out at that point. So, so if you fire it up and you're like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with the the work that I did here. It won't rev up. It's not supposed to. It, it won't, and it won't out on the lake either. But with all that back pressure, it sounds it sounds very smooth and you know, gir kind of gurs around. Um, these machines have a cool sound there. It's one of a kind. It's not like a Rotax. Um, so I'm going to go on more to things that I did. Uh, carb rebuild. I used all, I put all new parts in the carburetor, anything that could be replaced. Uh, however, I bought needle and seat kit from SBT and I stuck them in there and I couldn't get those things to seat worth a darn. I was getting bubbles and I actually pulled one out and looked at it underneath a microscope. Uh, crazy I know, but yeah, I have these things <laughs> to, uh, to help me look at stuff. I have um, all kinds of tools, but I was able to notice that on that needle the, it was actually kind of spongy looking. So there's something wrong with it. So I sent all those needle seat valve sets back. I put the original OEM ones back in these Makuni carburetors and I checked pop off and it was somewhere between 40 and 45 repeatedly and they work fantastic. So I'm like, okay, stick with the OEM, put it back together. Uh, a bad mistake I made when I put the carbs in was I forgot to attach the cables for the throttle and the choke, the cable mount goes on the intake. Well, if once the carburetors are in, that is really hard to get in. The back bolt closest to the engine is next to impossible. So you have to remember that to put that mount on before you put the carbs on. I even had a note on there in a bag that says, install before carburetors, big exclamation point. Oh yeah, well, I'm good at labeling stuff, but I'm not good at reading. <laughs> so let's see what other advice do I have. Um, 
uh, exhaust bolts. Just the exhaust is pretty pretty hard to put back together. It's kind of a hassle. It's so tight in here. I like to put this. I put this curved piece on first, and then you know brought everything else into it and installed it because. I, as one unit, man, you're playing with fire trying to put those bolts back in the engine down there. Uh, is what's going to happen is you're going to strip one out. With all this torque and weight and everything against those bolts on the front of the engine, you can't tell if you're starting a good thread. So to be on the safe side, I just installed this curved section first and then brought everything to it. And it, it's kind of tough. I mean, putting the engine back in this thing is simple. Putting the putting the exhaust on is kind of kind of a trick. Um, but I basically assembled the entire engine in here. I mean, on the bench I had the uh, the case and the cylinder uh, and the cylinder head and everything all assembled. And then, if you want to bench test it for compression, you really need to put the intake back on it. Um, and I, I guess the carbs. I don't know. I didn't do it because I uh, I just didn't do, do it that way but these bolts here this number 12 and number 13 on this machine they have brackets on them for the carburetors for the like the top plate on the carburetor well they need to be torqued down and really you need to have that all assembled to torque those bolts in the proper order I didn't do that I think everything's gonna be okay um, because I just had to, you know, straighten the brackets out and then torque them when the machine was all put back together. But definitely a kind of an error, I think, in in what I did here. Um, well, let's see what else. I have notes here. I'm looking down at my notes. Um, I put the carbs at seven eighths of a turnout. That's what the manual said. It seems great. I went on the lake. It really seems to be awesome. And we're probably about 2,500 foot elevation here. Um, Let's see fuel pump lines. Um, I put all all new lines on here, uh, with the exception of the fuel pump. Now, the pulse pump. The reason is those parts are well. One of them is custom form fuel line, and if you go on eBay, you'll find there's people selling them for 300 bucks <laughs> for a piece of fuel line. Well. I just I don't like to put lines back on the way that they came off. I like to cut the ends off, you know, and make sure that it's really tight on that on that nipple when you stick it back on there. Because if you just pull it off and put it back on, it it's kind of loose. So you need a new bite on it, if that makes any sense. So I took that special curved one and I cut it down a little bit, so it made a, a 90 degree up into the pump, and it seems to be a really good fit. Uh, the one that goes down into the in, into the intake that creates the vacuum for the pulse pump. I just put a brand new piece of fuel line on there and made it kind of long so it comes around the back and I think it worked out perfect. Um, the rest of the fuel line is this blue stuff here. Um, it's quarter inch line. You know, I I don't recommend doing it that way. I used 5.5 uh, millimeter which is 732 fuel line everywhere else and it went back together real nice and tight quarter inch fuel line and you you gotta almost use hose clamps to make sure it's gonna stay put I left it there because it's all exposed I can see what's happening and I think it's gonna be fine the beauty of the clear line is you can see gas moving so if you're having trouble starting your machine you can see if it's moving you know through the filter um, and I I think that's about it for this machine. Um, I, I hope this helps you guys out if you're watching this and and you're trying to work on one of these. I made some I did some good things and I, I made some mistakes all at the same time, but it was fun. And I'm really excited that uh, it it's running well, and I'm excited to get it out and break it in all the way. Uh, thanks for watching.